Hi, it's Tom from Green Shorts, and today I'm gonna to show you how to transfer worms from one worm bin to another. This video will also show the initial setup of a worm composting bin. This one I've got in a bucket worm bin that I've got a video for, simple DIY project, very inexpensive. And we're gonna transfer them to a two-tote worm bin system. Did a video on that too. This is a little more expensive, but it's gonna give you a lot more capacity for your compost. This worm transfer is way overdue for two reasons. Number one, there are a ton of soldier flies that have gotten into this bin, which is kind of inevitable if it's outside. And you can also tell that the worms have really worked their way through this compost. It's pretty much all looking like this, which is fully composted. It's kind of gross, doesn't it? These are worm castings. Black gold. Good stuff. But I do have a glove to use for the transfer of this. To set up the new worm bin, you'll need newspaper, a bucket of rainwater, or tap water that you've let sit overnight, and a batch of kitchen scraps. And of course, composting worms. If you're doing a transfer, you'll also want a glove. When I'm starting from scratch, I order my worms online from Uncle Jim's Worm Farm. There is a link to the website in the description below, as well as a 10% off coupon code. Full disclosure, I don't make any money from that coupon. I just love the service I get from Uncle Jim and the quality worms he consistently sends me. So let's get started transferring the worms from here into here. And while we're doing that, we're gonna separate out the soldier fly larva and take them to my friends to feed their chickens. All right, so we're gonna shred this newspaper into probably, you know, one and a half or two inch wide strips. And then we're gonna dip it in our bucket of rainwater and then line our top bin with a nice little bed of that. All right, now that I've got my nice wet bed of newspaper in place, it's time to move the worms to the new bin. And I'm gonna put on my glove for that. The worm castings have a nice earthy smell to them, but they can still be pretty rich. And so I don't wanna get that soaking into my hands. So, all right, here we go. I've got another big bucket here aside. I'm gonna move a lot of the Soldier flies too. If you're setting up a new worm bin, this is where you would add the worms you purchased. You little pockets of worms here in these folds of the paper towel. You can just grab the whole lot of them and avoid the soldier fly larva. Though you want to make sure they don't drop in. I was holding it over the top of that, and not a good idea. So here's a nice little mass of worms right here. I can just grab all of them together, and move them over. It's kind of inevitable to get soldier flies in your worm bin if it's outside. And they're actually very effective composters. There's a soldier fly in there. You see him go somewhere? Aha. Uh -huh. uh, thank you. You're welcome, Dad. Thank you, buddy. I saw him drop down and slither under there, so I've ah. been trying to signal you. Another method for transferring the worms is to use the extra lid. When you make a two-tote worm bin, you've got an extra lid. In the DIY video, I show you how to use it to make a divider that you're gonna use to separate layers of your compost as the worms start to process through it. However, the other option you have for the lid is to keep it like this and to use it to separate worms when you transfer them from one bin to another. 
So the way to do that is to just grab a whole hunk of worms out of there, pull them apart here. You can really get at them more easily. One method you can use to separate worms in this manner is the sunlight method. To do that, you do it in the middle of the day when you've got a nice big area of sunlight and you start with a big pile and the worms climb down in the pile to get away from the light. You can remove the top layer and then eventually you end up with a big old mass of worms down in the pile that's now smaller because you've been, you've been taking away from it. This is not a typical transfer because it's got so many soldier flies and more soldier flies than worms. The light method should still work here because we do have a little bit of light left here today. Now one thing I'd be looking for in a healthy worm bin system is cocoons, the worm eggs. And while the worms and the soldier flies seem to exist okay together, coexist that is, I don't think the soldier flies will eat the worms while they're living, but I do think that they eat the eggs, the cocoons. So it's not ideal to leave them together in the system for a long time. Once I get these worms transferred to this new bin, I'm actually going to move it inside. And that will help minimize the amount of soldier fly larvae that appear. Now, there will probably be some that I miss in the transfer, and that's sort of inevitable. But as long as their population stays pretty low, they don't multiply as quickly. So I can sort of stop their life cycle and prevent them from taking over the bin like they did in this case. I got Trevor on maggot patrol here. He's making sure I don't put any maggots in the... Ha ha! Trying to hide from me. All right, so I've moved enough worms from the bucket to the new bin here. And you can see I've cleared this off. There's probably enough in that bucket for two or three more systems. The next step is to take my vegetable scraps from the kitchen and give these worms some food. All right, so in here I've got an avocado, some carrots that were old, some celery trimmings, and I'm just gonna kind of sprinkle these sprinkle these around the bin. Nice banana peel there. I'm gonna use, since I'm gloved here, I'm gonna use this to crush that up to make it a little more easy to chew. Worms like things in small pieces, but usually stuff's coming out of your kitchen in small pieces. In addition to newspaper, you can also put paper towels in your worm bin as bedding. And they also really like cardboard, so the greasy parts of your pizza box if you cut those out before you recycle it, they can go in your worm bin as well. If you start to see soldier flies in your worm bin, even inside, here's a simple trick to help get some of them out. It's impossible to get rid of them all, but here's a, a simple idea using a strawberry bucket here, which is perforated. So it's got holes in the bottom. If we've got some rotten strawberries in the refrigerator, I'll put rotten strawberries or something like that in this container, close it up, and then I'm just gonna sit it down in with the worms. The soldier fly larva will follow that scent of the rotting fruit, and they'll climb in through these holes, and you can then lift this whole container out and dump it wherever you want it, or feed it to your chickens. I like to put it in some of my other composters. They actually are pretty voracious eaters. I don't like them in with the worms because they can sort of counteract the growth of the colony, but when in a pile or in some of my other composters, they do a pretty good job of helping break down that compost faster. So I do like the soldier fly larva for that purpose, but I don't like them in with my worms. Now that I've got my kitchen scraps in the bin here, I'm going to cover them up with another layer of newspaper. Basically, whenever you add scraps to your bin, you need to add newspaper over the top of it and wet it down. 
And rainwater works really good because it doesn't have any extra chemicals added, like chlorine or fluoride, so it's better for the worms. So actually having a rain barrel is a great combination for your worm bin. All right, so I've got some more newspaper here. Lay this on nice and thick. If you're adding this later, you don't have to wet it down first. You can actually um, add the water after you put the dry newspaper over the top of the vegetables. One way to keep the soldier fly larva out is to keep your new scraps covered. Again, having it in the garage isn't going to be as big a deal. Now this is ready for the next layer of kitchen scraps. And I've got probably more newspaper in here than I would do between uh, layers of scraps. But since these guys are just getting started out, I wanted a good base coat. Now if you remember what the, the bucket looked like before I started taking worms out of it, lots of worm castings. Once you start to see a pretty thick layer of worm castings in the top of your worm bin here, that's when you're going to want to put your divider in. So that's just going to sit down on top of there. Um, you might put some strings in this to be handles, just to allow you to lift it out. So what's going to happen is, as that bottom layer of castings gets nice and rich, like the other one, you're going to put new layer on top, nice new bed of newspaper. The worms will migrate up from the castings, and then you can just lift this out harvest the bottom here, and then put what was on top of this back in as your new base layer, hopefully with most of your worms in it. That's a lot easier than dividing in the way I just did. Well, there you have it, a new worm colony, created out of an old one. In fact, I probably have another two or three colonies to divide out of the old bucket. That's something I really like to do whenever I separate my worms from compost, is to divide those colonies and create new ones. In fact, it makes a great gift for someone who's curious about getting into worm composting. It's actually really easy to do, and it's a way for you to really cut back on how much you're throwing in the trash. Certainly those vegetable scraps that could be used to create garden soil. You can find the DIY video for the creation of this particular bin on Green Shorts DIY YouTube channel, and I've got lots of other composting videos as well to teach you different ways that you can compost if worms aren't for you. Our mission at Green Shorts is to help you see green so you can be green and save a little green by doing it yourself. Thanks for watching. Please like and share this video and subscribe for new DIY videos every Friday.